No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. I am glad that a lot of Israelites are starting to understand what it truly means to return to the Father. The people of the Most High spent multiple generations worshiping the gods of the heathens. Although our ancestors knew the Father and the laws he gave to them, it didn't stop the Israelites from worshiping other gods. Whenever the Most High gave his people into the hands of their enemies, our ancestors knew exactly what they had to do to get the Most High to intervene on their behalf. Our ancestors humbled themselves, cried out to the Father, and repented. Israelites, the requirements remains the same for our generation to see the Most High intervene on our behalf. The scripture said in the book of Chronicles that if we humble ourselves, repent, pray, and turn away from wickedness, the Most High said he would forgive our sins and heal our land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Presently, we are in the land of our enemies and held captive. Many Israelites have accepted religion's doctrines on how to serve the Father. They worshiped the Messiah and accepted the Messiah as their Lord and Savior. Despite worshiping and accepting the Messiah, their enemies still rule over them with a rod of iron. The word of the Most High said if we humble ourselves, repent, pray, and seek the Most High, he would intervene. The Israelites and indigenous black people believe they've humbled themselves by serving the Messiah yet their situation remains the same. The reason your conditions remains the same, sin has been identified, preventing the Most High, the Father, from intervening on your behalf. The only thing that separates you from the Father is sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. The reason some Israelites are starting to see the hands of the Most High operating in their life, some Israelites are starting to return to the Father and now are following his statutes, commandments, and laws. The Israelites and indigenous black people have accepted and worshipped the Messiah a long time ago, and that didn't trigger the awakening. When the people of the Most High noticed their lack of power against the heathens that oppressed them, Many Israelites started looking within to find out why they are not seeing the power of the Most High in their life. Remember, Israelites, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or Lo, there, or behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The Most High started to draw his people to him, and the remnant in this generation accepted his call. That is what triggered the awakening. Your awakening had nothing to do with Messiah worship. Religious doctrines have truly disabled our people. The purpose of these doctrines is to destabilize you. The synagogue of Satan created doctrines that caused the people of the Most High to remain stagnant and powerless. If the Israelites and indigenous black people would allow the Most High to transform them by renewing their minds, the lies told to them in religion could no longer have a stronghold on their life, especially the numerous misconceptions about the Messiah in the beast religion. The Most High said in the last days, knowledge would increase. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, 
and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Despite the Most High increasing our knowledge by exposing the mountains of lies and deceptions the synagogue of Satan have told in religion, a lot of Israelites continue to reject knowledge. With the large population of Israelites rejecting the truth that is being revealed in the awakening, they are perishing in the beast system. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. A lack of knowledge and rejecting knowledge will cause you to miss the coming kingdom. The scripture said only a remnant would return. Despite the Israelites and the indigenous black people's population is numerous, only a remnant will return. The hour has come for the Most High to expose the secrets and lies told to his people that held them in bondage. It was prophesied that everything hidden will be known. The time for the secrets and lies of the heathens to be exposed is right now in the awakening. The truth being revealed brings deliverance to me. To some Israelites, the truth makes them afraid. Israelites, the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us a sound mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The high level workers of iniquity and religion spent multiple generations programming the minds of everyone who accept and welcome any form of religious faith. The workers of iniquity made sure to separate the people from the father. I've noticed there's a large population of Israelites and indigenous black people who don't bother to get to know the Father, the Most High. The majority worship the Messiah and believe that is all they have to do to inherit the coming kingdom. Due to the false doctrines from religion, there's a large population of people who don't know the Father. Some Israelites would rather talk with the high-level workers of iniquity that are deceiving them instead of working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. The disciples of Satan made many people feel inadequate. Therefore, they don't approach the Father to establish a personal relationship with the Father. Instead of the people placing the Father first and giving Him their first fruit, they worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. Now that the true gospel is being revealed in the awakening, the Most High, the Father, the Merciful, is giving the remnant in this generation the opportunity to get to know him and return to him. I am glad to see that many are taking a leap of faith and welcoming truth into their hearts. The scripture said, the truth shall make you free. Being one of the few chosen to talk about truth that many people find difficult to believe. Truth, such as the Messiah is not the Father in the flesh, and revealing the identity of the true Messiah is just as difficult for me as it is for those of you who are listening and trying to come to terms with everything. Some people cannot believe they were deceived by the very people who proclaim to be watching over their soul. The word of the Most High says Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, his ministers will also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Israelites, don't be surprised that the workers of iniquity and religion lie to you. Satan's government in the beast system is designed to keep you in bondage. We were foolish to believe the very people that help keep us in bondage would help set us free. The heathens will sabotage your relationship with the Father to continue to rule over you. Israelites, you have to give the Most High the opportunity to reveal who he is regardless of how the truth makes you feel. The truth of the Most High's words will certainly sanctify you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, don't let your feelings stand between you and the Most High. Your emotions are unstable. That is why they change frequently. 
Just because the truth doesn't make you feel good or sound good to you, it doesn't mean the truth being revealed is false or wrong. On the other hand, just because a doctrine makes you feel good, it doesn't mean the doctrine is correct and true. Satan know that as long as he caters to your flesh, you will accept anything. Most Israelites' rejection of truth are based on feelings. Israelites, if you rely on your emotions to make decisions for you, you will be unstable in everything that you do. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. As spiritual beings, we cannot let the flesh dictate what we do. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through the Most High by the pulling down of strongholds, according to the scriptures. I am committed to pulling down every stronghold, strongholds that have become generational curses for my people. Israelites, you have to reach a point where you no longer want to be a captive. The time has come for you to return to the Father. We spent too many generations worshiping the idols and the gods of the heathens. We must stop trading our glorious glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. The sin of idolatry is still a problem in the Israelites and indigenous black people's community. Even when the truth that is meant to set the people free is spoken, some Israelites welcome the truth but continue in idolatry. Some are committing idolatry unknowingly. One of the biggest idols in the Israelite community is the Messiah. I want to show you the various ways the Messiah that came in the Most High's name has become an idol. Anything that you put in first place before the Father, the Most High, is an idol. Last week, you learned that the Messiah is not the Father in the flesh. The Messiah is a created being just like we are created beings. The Most High said to his people, there should be no other gods before him. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Some Israelites have placed the Messiah before the Father. Many worship the Messiah and give the glory of the Father to the Messiah. All who do this are guilty of idolatry. The Most High said he will not share his glory with no one. The scripture said that the Messiah is the visible image of the Father. All of the descendants of Adam are the visible image of the Father as well. This does not mean we are the Father. The Most High made it very clear that he will not share his glory with no graven images. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Despite the Messiah and the indigenous black people are the image of the Father, the Most High said he will not share his glory with any of us. There's only one who seek glory. That one is the Most High, the Father, said the Messiah that came in the Father's name. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. I spent a lot of time talking about what the Messiah that came in his own name did. I want to talk about what the scriptures say about the Messiah that came in the Father's name. Also, I want to talk about some of the things the Messiah said that would destroy the doctrines of Rome. These words are coming out of the mouth of the Messiah that came in the Father's name. Rome said that the Messiah have taken our sins away and died for the world. The Messiah that came in the Father's name said, I came to fulfill everything that is written about me. The Messiah said everything that is written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. What did the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms say concerning the Messiah that came in the Father's name? If you continue to verse 46 in the book of Luke, the Messiah said to his audience that he must suffer. The book of Adam and Eve confirmed what the Messiah said about him suffering. The word said to Adam and Eve that he should suffer for their sake. 
Adam was sad because the word of God told him that he had to suffer for his salvation. Then Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of God's words to them that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. The Messiah shedding his blood for forgiveness of sin did the same thing Adam and Eve did when they were looking for forgiveness from the Father. The Messiah went on to say that he will rise on the third day. Lastly, the Messiah said repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things, Israelites, let me remind you not to become a surface level reader when it comes to the word. There's a lot hidden in the scriptures. You will never get to the root if you only explore the surface. The scriptures use the word repentance and remission. The Messiah said, preach in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem about repentance and remission. Did you notice that repentance come before remission? In order to find forgiveness for your sins, repentance must occur first. Rome said you had to believe in the Messiah and all your sins are taken away. The Messiah that came in the Father's name said otherwise. Repent and you will find forgiveness of sin, which goes hand in hand with John, who is the forerunner before the Messiah was to come. He said, repent, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Most High called for us in this generation to repent and return to him. The book of Chronicles said, If my people would humble themselves, pray and seek my face. This scripture happens to be one of my favorite scriptures. This verse pertains to every Israelite in every generation. The Most High, the Father said, if you seek my face, if you're seeking the face of the Father through the Messiah, why is the Most High asking you to seek his face? Many Israelites was following the false Messiah that came in his own name. The false Messiah was looking for his own glory. Because so many Israelites choose that Messiah over the Most High, they never connected to the Father. That is the reason they never saw the Most High operating in their life. When you humble yourself before the Most High and turn from your wicked ways, then will the Most High hear you from heaven and offer you forgiveness of sin. Once you do this, the Most High said his eyes will be open and ears listening to your prayers. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. You heard from the Messiah and the Most High that forgiveness of sin is offered to you once you repent. Rome said you have to accept the Messiah as your Lord and Savior and your sins are taken away. So far, Rome doctrines couldn't be verified through the scriptures. Another doctrine from Rome exposed to be false. The scripture said in the book of John that I am the way, the truth, and life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. A lot of Israelites say this verse gives them the authority to worship the Messiah. Nowhere in that verse does it say for you to worship the Messiah. Nowhere in the scriptures does the Messiah say to worship him. Worshiping the Messiah came from Rome. Pagans worship anything. We are not pagans. The scripture said you can't get to the Father unless through the Messiah. A lot of Israelites don't know the role of the Messiah. 
I did a message on the last day of the pagan calendar year 2022 about the role of the prince over our people. I recommend that you watch that video to know the role of the Messiah. The Most High made the Messiah prince over our people and all the righteous. He is the leader to our people and the righteous. He's our high priest making intercessions for us. Making intercessions for us doesn't mean you're the father. Before the coming of the Messiah, the sons of Aaron were the chosen high priests to bring our offerings to the father. Our ancestors did not worship the high priests, the sons of Aaron. They worship the father. Today, the Messiah is in the same position as our high priest. Everyone is worshiping him. The intercessor, the Messiah, bring your prayers to the most high. The book of Baruch confirmed this to be true. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander-in-chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. You've just heard in the scriptures that the gates only open to the commander of chief, Michael. Not only does the door open to him, he is the key holder of the kingdom. The scriptures in the Bible say the same thing about the Messiah. The truth is in our faces. Some Israelites choose not to see it. Many Israelites and indigenous black people love the ways of the beast system and the beast religion. That is why they've rejected the real Messiah for the false Messiah. Our people have been rejecting the most high from the beginning. The book of Baruch said, the holy angel Michael bring your prayers to the most high. Isn't that the job of the intercessor? The mediator between the most high and the people? The one who speak to the father on our behalf? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory, the most high. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessings of the priesthood until I come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh. And after these things I awake, and bless the Most High, and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of Israel, and for all the righteous. And now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you. For he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. If the Israelites knew that the Messiah is an angel, they would finally understand why they shouldn't worship the Messiah. Our people can understand why the scripture said in the book of Isaiah that the Most High, the Father, is our Savior. I've been trying to tell our people this vital information for the past few months. The Most High said we shouldn't worship the angels. The true Messiah is an angel and many worship him instead of the Most High. This is how some Israelites are practicing idolatry unknowingly. I've been trying to point out this error to our people so that they could return to the Father. Israelites, I don't know how many different ways for me to tell you who is the Messiah and his position in Israel. I've made countless videos revealing this information to you. There's more than one witnesses confirming the holy angel Michael. Two of those witnesses are our fathers, the progenitor to the tribes of Israel. If you cannot see at this point, it wasn't given to you to know the mysteries. The Most High did not open the scriptures to you. 
you're not mature enough to learn the deep things of the Most High. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. As soon as you mature, the Holy Spirit will bring this truth to you again. Maybe at that time, the Most High will use this channel as confirmation when you elevate spiritually. If you're not ready to digest the deep things of the Most High, don't become a stumbling block to those of us who can. You can continue to follow Rome and the sons of Belial in the false awakening, or you can choose to stand apart and serve the Most High, the Father. Whatever you do, you must choose. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Regardless, if you believe accepting the Messiah is the only way for you to get to the Father, the Most High the Father must choose you to place you under the Messiah. You didn't choose the Most High, the Most High chose you. If the decision for us to choose the Most High was up to us, the Israelites have chosen other gods over the Most High in every generation. That is why we are in the land of our captivity. The leaders of our people led us into captivity because of the sin of idolatry. The Israelites forsake the Most High in every generation. Even in this generation, Israelites are forsaking the Father for the false God in the name of Jesus. Israelites, the Messiah that came in the Father's name said you can't come to him unless the Father draw you to him. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. If you don't know the Father, how can he draw you to him? Also, if the Father must draw you to the Messiah, why does Rome teach that you have to accept the Messiah to be saved? It is the Most High that draw the remnant to him. The Most High, the Father, already know before the foundation of this earth was laid, who would serve him? Nothing that you or me does surprise the Father. With Rome teaching that you have to accept the Messiah as your Lord and Savior is false. If you have the Father, the Most High place you under the care of the Messiah. The Messiah that came in the Father's name said that all the sheep the Most High gave to him, none will be lost. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. The Most High, the Father, must draw you to him. Once you are with the Most High, he place you in the care of the Prince he placed over us and all the righteous. If you have the Father, you have the Messiah. A lot of Israelites are welcoming the false Messiah and rejecting the Father. Rome has taught you to reject the Father, to accept and worship the false Messiah that want to be the Most High. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. There's only one, the Father. He's the supreme ruler of everything. There's none besides the Most High. A lot of Israelites are deep in Messiah worship, and it's going to take some time for them to get out of Messiah worship. One of the deception of Satan is fooling the people into believing they have a lot of time. Israelites, we're living in the last days. Besides the last days, you don't know the amount of time assigned to you to live in this realm. The scriptures warn us that Satan know that he has but a short time. You should know that your time is limited as well. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. The prophesied awakening is happening to help all of Adam's descendants return to the Father by following the examples the Messiah set when he was made flesh. 
I'm not sure why there's controversy in serving the Father. I thought you loved the Father. The Most High said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The scripture said to love the Father with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. The Messiah that came in the Father's name said for you to love the Father. Why is the Israelites giving the glory of the Father to another? The time has come for you to think for yourselves, Israelites and indigenous black people. Remember, Rome don't serve the Most High, nor do they have the spirit of the Most High. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. When you take the time to explore the scriptures without the interruptions of the beast religion and Satan's ministers, the scripture starts to make sense when the Holy Spirit is guiding you. If you truly love the Father, you shouldn't have no problem returning to the Father. The scripture is correct when they say they love me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Another way many Israelites are idolizing the Messiah, the scripture said the Messiah is the lion from the tribe of Judah. So many are proud that the scripture said that he would come from the tribe of Judah. A lot of Israelites are proud to say the Messiah is a black man. In one breath, he's a black man. In another breath, he is God in the flesh. How can the Most High be a man and the creator? The Most High is not a man. The Most High created man in his image. The Father is spirit. That is another reason the Messiah is not the Father in the flesh. The lion from the tribe of Judah can transform himself into a man. The angels have the ability to do this. We see the angels take on the likeness of man to intervene in the situation of mankind throughout the scriptures. A good example is when the Most High sent two angels that took on the likeness of man to save Lot and his family. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Lot didn't recognize the angels. The scripture said, Be careful on how you treat strangers. Some entertain angels unaware. Lot entertain angels unawares. Many of you entertain angels unawares. There are numerous scriptures revealing angels engaging in the affairs of mankind. Our Messiah is meek and long-suffering. Our ancestors expected the Messiah to come with great pride, declaring that he is the Son of God. If you're meek, pride has no place in you. Satan deceived himself with pride. The lion of the tribe of Judah is powerful. Judah and David were mighty men of war when they walked this earth. It made sense that the lion of the tribe of Judah is powerful as well. What makes the Messiah unique is that he's divine as well. Judah had an angel of might that made him strong. King David had the spirit of the Most High with him. The lion of the tribe of Judah is an angel and he is not some regular angel some people belittle him to be. The Most High appointed him over all the angels. He is the commander in chief. When the Messiah humbled himself and became flesh, the Most High was well pleased with his faithfulness. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The Most High is well pleased with all who does his will. Everyone who keeps the statutes, commandments, and laws. The Most High was pleased with the Messiah that he exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name. The heathens removed that name from the scriptures. All who deny him because they can't accept him to be an angel would definitely be humbled. Some of you need to do your research on the archangel Michael before you belittle him. 
after you do your research on the prince over our people, you will find out that he's not some angel. He is appointed to execute the judgment of the Most High. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. When the Messiah walked this earth, our ancestors was expecting a great king that was going to take over the kingdoms of the heathens. Remember when our ancestors asked Samuel to make them a king like all the nations? Our ancestors thought the Messiah was going to come and slay the wicked. When the word became flesh, he humbled himself, making his grand entrance on a donkey. The Messiah didn't have a place to sleep. A lot of people rejected him because they thought he was powerless. Many Israelites and heathens underestimated him because of his meekness. Some people mocked him. They said he saved others. Himself he cannot save. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. If the Messiah wanted to display his power, he could have. The Messiah went on to say he could pray to the Father to send him 12 legions of angels to assist him when his enemies gathered against him. Instead, he chose to humble himself to execute the mission the Most High sent him to fulfill. When the day of the Most High come, the Messiah will carry out the vengeance of the Most High. Rome teach that the Messiah is the Most High, the Father, in the flesh, and many Israelites agree with Rome. Why does the Most High need to call on his created creatures, the angels, to help him when Judas betrayed him? In other words, he said to Peter that he can pray to himself to ask himself to send 12 legions of angels, lesser beings, to save him. The Most High is the supreme ruler and creator, but he's proclaiming to be able to call on himself to send 12 legions of angels to rescue him. Israelites ask the Father for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. Thinkst thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? Some Israelites today transform the Messiah into the Most High because of the greatness the Most High bestow upon him. Because of his uniqueness, many believe he can't be a created creature the Most High made and appointed to do his will. All whom the Most High called, he appointed to do his will. He gave us gifts and talents to fulfill the call on our lives. The Most High does not have to come in the flesh to save his creation from his creatures. The Father made everything. If the Most High wanted, he can destroy this earth from his throne. He can save his people while sitting on his throne. The Most High could have ended the saga a long time ago. Our Father choose to be humbled. That is why he command his people to humble themselves. Rome took the anointing the Most High bestow upon the true Messiah, transform him into a God, making everyone worship him instead of the Father. Israelites, this is how the synagogue of Satan tricked many of you into idolatry. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Israelites, listen to the scriptures. They changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. This is exactly what the mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, have done. Today, the Most High found Rome guilty of misleading the people. Israelites, no one is going to work out your salvation for you. You must work out your own salvation. 
The doctrines of Rome is popular among the heathens in the beast religion, as well as in the Hebrew Israelite religion. Only a few believe the truth being spoken in the true awakening. Israelites, you tell me which way is the broad road. Rome has over 3 billion following their doctrines. The truth I am sharing with you today, less than a few thousand believe. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are on that road. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, the road is getting narrow. Are you one of the few that have found the narrow road that leads to life? Don't let your emotions make the decision for you. Seek the face of the Father before you follow the Satans onto the popular road that leads to destruction. Many of you serve and worship two masters, the Messiah and the God of the heathens. It's either you hate one and love the other. Israelites, you can't worship and serve them both. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. <laughs>